Wheel of Time season two is upon us. And boy, oh boy, lucky us, they dropped the first three episodes, count them, three episodes for the first weekend, which was a lot to get through, let me tell you. So we're gonna do the first three episodes all in one video. Before I get started breaking down each episode, I would just like to say that I really feel like season two would have benefited from a Star Wars-esque title crawl because we open on our characters being in completely different places from where they were when we ended season one with no explanation of how they got there or who they are currently with. So I'm going to do my best to tell you where they are and what they're doing, but the show doesn't really tell you where they are or what they're doing, so yeah. Episode 1, A Taste of Solitude. We open with zero context on some kid somewhere in a house that's kind of star-shaped, so that's cool, uh, being chased by beasties. So she hides under the table that the grown-ups are having a meeting at. And the grown-ups are talking about our boy Hollister. And one of the grown-ups appears to be insurance dude that Hollister killed last season? What? Somehow he survived. Insurance dude asks her if she's hiding under the table because there are monsters and then starts monologuing about how unfair it is that he and his pals get labeled as monsters. Speaking of his pals, if we take a look at who else is around that table wearing black hoods, which if I'm trying not to appear to be sinister, I'm not sure that that would be the look I'd go for. But anyway, one of them takes off his sinister black hood and it is none other than salesman dude who was monologuing about the dark side last season. He smiles very reassuringly. Insurance dude takes the kid outside and continues monologuing at her. He wants her to meet one of the beasties to show her how wrong she is to fear them. And he teaches Baby Belle to see the beauty underneath this beast. A tale as old as time. Then we cut to not Galadriel at some well somewhere. She's uh, going through a rough patch, I guess, after last season. She decides to indulge in a little bit of well-earned self-care by taking a hot bath, but being in a hot bath that she couldn't heat with the power of her mojo is super triggering. Simp, meanwhile, can't train either because he's getting really emotional. Or is he feeling her emotions? But her mojo is turned off, so he can't feel her emotions, right? Or is it only the geolocation that's turned off for good, but he still can feel her? Or is he just like going through his own thing right now? I need to know whose feelings he's feeling. Anyway, some cougar is watching Simp and Cougar's roommate wants to know what Knock Ladriel is up to. But Simp says that she doesn't tell him anything either. Is that why he was crying? A visitor from Outlander is here to see Knock Galadriel, but Simp isn't invited to the meeting. Awkward. Anyway, then we cut to Cliff doing some chores over at headquarters. She almost walks in on one of the girl bosses having some fun. Whoops. A uh, mean girl is also doing chores and true to form, she is already miffed about something. You see last season, the head girl boss told mean girl that she's like super special. And the thing is, she's not being treated like she's super special. She has to do chores just like everybody else. Uh, Cliff's like, um, get off your high horse. Even head girl boss used to have to do chores. Girl boss who Cliff almost walked in on comes in to give them the day's lesson, which uh, means they can stop doing chores. So yay, not yay. Uh, okay. So everyone gets a glass of dirty water and everyone's got to drink that glass of water before the end of the day. So what they got to do is use their mojo to clean the water. So what they do is what you do is you tap into the earth side of your mojo and also into the water side of the mojo. And then you mix the earth and water mojos together, making the water mojo dirty with earth mojo. And then you pour the actual dirty water through the dirty mojo water. That like cancels it out. So, so now when you pour real dirty water into mojo dirty water, out comes clean water. Yeah. That makes sense. But now it's Cliff who's too good for doing lessons. Mean Girl's like, yeah, we're too good for this. Girl Boss tells him that big stuff comes with practice. You gotta walk before you can run. If they wanna be flattening armies single-handedly, they gotta start by ironing out the small stuff. But now Mean Girl thinks that that kind of power is too much for anyone to have. So she, she doesn't wanna do little stuff cause, cause that's, that's silly and little. But she doesn't want big stuff cause that's bad and evil. So she wants medium stuff. 
Mean Girl refuses to do the lesson. Everyone is shocked. And if that means that she's got to drink this dirty water as is, well, fine. Then we cut to the Girl Boss Teachers Conference. Red wants a turn teaching Mean Girl, but the principal of the Girl Bosses is like, um... No. Not since he killed one of your trainees. Okay, but like if Red isn't allowed to train any of them, why is she in the teacher's conference? Anyway, Red is like, gals, bad times are nigh though. The hunt for the horn or something. We we need all the help that we can get and um, bad bad things, badness is coming. So, so yeah, give me a chance. And the principal's like, well, oh, fine, whatever. Then we cut to Hagrid, he's alive? I would have sworn that he was dead last season. Anyway, Wifeless is moping about not being able to be with his friends and his friends are all gone. Anyway, Hagrid reminds us that the hunt for the horn thingy is, is, a, is a thing. That's the second time someone's mentioned this. I suspect it's important. Hagrid starts negging Eyepatch, but then Rutro, the vampire from Twilight, is standing in their path. Eyepatch is pretty pissed at vampire and he's like, hey, your signal fire. It's, it's gonna give us all away. Wasn't me. So everyone gets off their horses so they can have a good close look at the dead bodies lying on the ground. You can't, can't see that they're dead. You're still on your horse. Wifeless starts wolfing out, but also he can see the past? Is that a thing that wolves can do? Vamp keeps staring at Wifeless. I guess vampires don't like werewolves any better in this universe. Then we cut back to Galadriel's meeting with Outlander Man. And he's showing her his rock collection. Okay, I know what this kind of stone is, and I know that it's kind of rare. Why do you think I care? Because it's unbreakable. Yes, and? And it's broken. And then, not Galadriel, who knew what kind of stone this was, and therefore must have known that it is unbreakable, and could have easily seen that this was broken, is like, oh. Then we get back to Simp, who's picking tomatoes and chatting about his feelings. Wait, no, sorry, he's talking about her feelings, which I guess he can't feel anymore. Uh, apparently now that she has no use for him anymore, uh, she wants him to fuck off. And uh, he's he's kind of sad about that. Anyway, back to Nakaladriel, uh, who's suddenly very interested in the broken rock. Uh, there was something written on like the big thing that it was broken off from. Uh, and it turns out that the big thing, what was written on it in blood was a poem and Outlander has got a copy like of it transcribed. So he starts haggling. He wants like a whole bunch for the rock and he'll throw in the poem for five more. For a poem? Well, Mal, you're dreaming. Okay, fine, one for the poem. So she pays him one for the poem. This is all I need. Oh, so she was playing dumb. Oh, nicely done. Uh, he takes this uh, surprisingly well. Uh, he tells her about the bad dudes following him that he thought she sent, but she says she didn't. But then she's she's more interested again in the, the dudes that he said were following him. And he's like, yeah, they're like bad and they wear like evil cloaks and don't have faces. And she's like, ah, shit, here's like a whole bunch more money. Um, so that you can get out of here. Okay, so he asked for five marks for the poem and she was like, that's ridiculous. I could buy like the finest horse in the land for that amount of money to like give us a sense of like the value of currency. So like, okay, I appreciate that. But now she's given him 10 marks for provisions for like getting out of here. I feel like that's either exceedingly generous or inflation is hitting them harder than it's hitting us. Uh, then we cut to Mean Girl training with some other simps. I think these are the ones that Cliff almost walked in on. Charming as always. She tells the simps of the girl boss who did the water lesson, I know you love her, but she's a real piece of work. She's a piece of work. I would say that was the pot calling the kettle black, but like, Literally, what has girl boss done? Anyway, the simps tell her that the training here at headquarters is gonna put you through a lot. It's gonna put you through like literal torture. Eesh. And they're like personalized tortures, but like it's it's definitely worth it. But, she, but she's gotta like commit to that and like get ready for that. She's not reacting well to just filtering water. So how do we think actual torture's gonna go? Anyway, then we cut to Cliff knocking on girl boss's door. Come in, um, but like, are you having a threesome again? A way to make sure that no one forgets that you almost walked in on them, a thing you definitely want to keep bringing up to your teacher. I said come in, didn't I? She joins her teacher on the rug for uh, office hours. Okay, so I honestly had trouble paying attention to the scene because 
The fruit that she's holding, I thought that it was changing into a different fruit. I was wrong about that. But she is holding it so differently between scenes that it kind of looks like a completely different fruit. And that really distracted me. So I think they talked about threesomes and had a really stupid misunderstanding where Cliff's asking about the water lesson and... And the girl boss is like, oh, you're definitely asking me about threesomes. And then Cliff's like, God, no, I'm talking about the water lesson. And the teacher's like, mm, sensuously eats pomegranate. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure that scene was, was very important and I missed a lot there. Anyway, cut to me and girl who's decided to do the water lesson after all, just like on her own, uh, like, like a makeup assignment. But then Red comes in and starts negging her. I'm starting to think that Mean Girl might fit in with Red's crew. Then Red full on attacks her. That escalated quickly. I guess I can see why her previous students died. Uh, Red reminds us that Reds don't need dudes. Dudes are gross. Dudes are useless. Dudes are basically glorified guard dogs. Mean Girl doesn't really react to any of that. Uh, so, so Red's gotta like up the ante and be more specific. So she goes straight for the one dude Mean Girl, I think still likes, not Galadriel Simp. And Mean Girl does lose it at that point. The other girl bosses think there's only one way to girl boss. Let me show you the red side of the mojo. Uh, then we cut to a wifeless being upset that the, uh, the horn quest squad are, um, are burying the, the bad guys. Uh, Wifeless then talks for more than he ever talked for the entirety of the first season. It was at this point that I realized that I didn't actually know what his voice sounded like until that point. Anyway, he's talking about how Salesman Dude was like seemed really nice when he visited their town, but then he like turned out to be evil. So like, who do you trust, right? He's, he's real broken up about that, so. There's a rage inside of me. Then we cut to Simp checking in on not Galadriel. How did it go? Who was he? A sailor. Why was he here? What did he want? Nachos. Nachos? Nacho business. Okay, well, I'm gonna have my dinner in my room tonight. I missed the part, but that's my problem. These two are great communicators. Uh, then we cut to Mean Girl visiting Cliff with a letter from Wifeless. I'm not saying that he couldn't have sent a letter, that that would be impossible, but He's like riding in the wilderness with the horn quest folks, hunting bad guys on horseback. So like, is there like a well-established like courier network in the land that easily can deliver your post? Or is he personally seeking out strangers or established couriers and paying them to take these extremely important missives um, to his friends who are in school? If so, does where is he getting the funds for that and is is it that important anyway um the really really important message that he sent somehow to the headquarters for them is that he misses them and uh he hopes that they can organize a, a get together real soon um and and maybe maybe gambler will be there too wouldn't wouldn't that be nice you can see very very urgent message speaking of gambler we next cut to gambler and his new face uh, looks like he's a prisoner of red this must have been what not galadriel wanted right because she specifically told that lady in season one to like send a message to Red to find Gambler. So, yep, I, I guess this is what Not Gladriel wanted. Anyway, um, Red has um, so much free time in her schedule that she can just spend it poking through Mean Girl's mail and then taunting Gambler with um, her lies about what's what's in the letter from Wifeless, how his how his friends don't don't care about him, and yeah, that's what. This girl boss is spending her time doing. Anyway, uh, cut to Wifeless celebrating Tangled Day alone. Cut to Gambler lifting a lamp. Cut to Cliff crying over Hollister. Cut back to Gambler rearranging his furniture. Then back to me and girl promising or threatening to never leave Cliff. Then back to Gambler poking his wall. Then back to Mean Girl and Cliff also celebrating Tangled Day. Then we cut to Hollister? He's alive? I mean, we, the audience, knew that, but imagine if we didn't, how shocked we'd be. Uh, anyway, he's also celebrating Tangled Day. And we cut to Simp having dinner with their new roommates. Again, I would tell you who these people are, but there was no title crawl, so I have no idea. Anyway, he's decided to set out a plate for Nakaladriel, even though she said she was gonna have dinner in her room. And he wants everyone to wait to eat until, to, until she comes to the table, even though she told him that she wouldn't be doing that. Anyway, Cougar's roommate, she decides to explain to Simp that being cut off from your mojo is the same as 
S A. Um, so anyway, they tell um, Simp that uh, he he needs to talk less and listen more. Real talker, famous famous for that. He is. He, he does also find this ironic. Anyway, um, because of this lovely chat, Simp decides not to make them wait for not Galadriel to have dinner. He's he's gonna take her plate to her. Oh, progress. But um, she doesn't appear to be in her room, so he sets her plate down on top of some fragile looking parchments. Speaking for myself, if someone set a plate for me down on my papers, I'd be pretty pissed. Like. You couldn't move them. Anyway, then we cut to Nakaladriel, who's actually saddling a horse because she's planning to, like, sneak on out of there and ride away alone at night without her mojo, which seems to me like a very bad idea, but I guess she knows what she's- Oh, fuck. Voldy's here. Oh, no. Bet you wish you had your mojo or anybody else with you. But, um, she's just taking care of business, scooting some dirt around with her foot. That- that'll- help in in some way i'm i'm sure oh she stabbed one in the throat nice one ah oh, fuck the other one stabbed her in the belly r.i.p knuckle oh simp is here to the rescue oh shit simp got stabbed a bunch too r.i.p knuckle Adriel and simp oh wait cougar's roommate's here to the rescue simp who's bleeding out and possibly dying turns to not Adriel, who's bleeding out and possibly dying what aren't you telling me those wouldn't be my first choice for last words but I've heard worse. On to episode two, Strangers and Friends. Okay, like, is it just me or does this, like, thumbnail for episode two of season two look like a modern day music video for, like, a pop star or something? Like, this is not giving high fantasy adaptation. We open on Hollister, who has killed all of his friends. Oh, just kidding. That was a dream? Ooh la la, he's with a girly that isn't Cliff. Then uh, next morning, Hollister's strolling around town, munching, looking much more confident, man about town, living his best life, we stand. Then he heads to Bedlam? Then we cut to Simp and Nakaladriel are alive and look completely fine. Not even in bed, they're just, just chilling. Looking just maybe a little hungover. Uh, the team at the house has decided to join Not Galadriel and go with her to headquarters, which is, like, I guess, where she was headed? I've been kicked out. I know. And then she leaves. Where are we going? Headquarters. But... Have someone else prep my horse. You're too weak to do it. Because he tried to save your life and then almost died. Do they not teach gratitude at headquarters? We cut to the questing crew. Empire is walking ahead while everyone else rides slowly behind him. Very efficient way to travel. And we gotta check out this house that Vamp says is super sus. Wifeless starts hallucinating again. And, uh, and then they find a Voldy strung up and tortured. Yeesh. And we cut to Hollister in Bedlam. He's smiling creepily at the crazies being crazy. I think they were going for like kind and sympathetic smiles. But honestly, it's just giving Ajax from Deadpool. Anyway, so he takes a crazy man for a walk. Uh, and everything is nice until this bully comes over and triggers crazy man's PTSD. That wasn't very nice. We cut to Cliff at headquarters doing her chores, uh, but, but she can't find Mean Girl because Mean Girl was taken to watch a girl getting healed. But um, it seems like Red only did this because she wanted to steal some poison. Uh, after they witnessed the amazing healing, Red decides that this is a good time to make the point that healing is pointless and stupid. Why would you heal people when you could kill people instead? Uh, and then and then Red buys some pastries and takes them to Gambler, who's still locked up somewhere. Gambler suspects that the pastries are poisoned, so he sticks his finger in the jammy center, licks it, and then doesn't eat them. Huh? Anyway, as soon as she leaves, it's back to rearranging the furniture. Okay, so I guess he's trying to escape by scraping the stones in his walls. But like the wall that he's chosen is very obviously an interior wall. Like there's a wall on the other side with a window on it, which doesn't definitely, but much more likely leads to the outside. But he's gone with the side wall, which if I had to guess would probably just lead to another prison cell, but okay. And we cut to Cliff wandering around uh, and she discovers the new kid on the block who appears to be a spoiled princess. But princess is um, a real talker. My giant room is basically the size of a closet. Oh, are you new? Oh yeah, your room is full of junk too, huh? Oh, this is your stuff. Uh... 
Oops. Oh look, a blanket that I happen to know all about because I studied the town it's from. I didn't think they'd let me live with the normies because I'm special. Oh, do you not like know who I am? Oh my gosh, so many epic team-ups have started between dorm mates. What do you think? Are we destined to be besties? Lady, you literally met this girl maybe two minutes ago? Can you chill? Cut to the girl boss staff meeting. Fruit Lady says that what Red wants to do is too dangerous. Simp one then kindly reminds the audience of what it is that Red wants to do. Then the principal reminds the audience that the mojo is strong with Mean Girl, in case you forgot that. But Fruit Lady points out that the mojo is only strong with Mean Girl when she's either afraid or angry. As we all know, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. Simp one says exams could kill her because a lot of people die during exams. And Fruit Lady's like, okay, but the real question is, why is Gen Z stronger with the mojo than us millennials? It's not fair. Simps are like, yeah, for real, not just Mean Girl, it's all of them. Oh, I guess that question was rhetorical? The pattern is giving us weapons to fight uber baddie. Okay, so then Red's plan of training Mean Girl to fight, you're good with it. I missed the part where she's my problem. Well, Red has called an all hands meeting, so she's making it everyone's problem, which uh, includes you, Fruit Lady, unless you're planning to bounce. No comment. So, uh, are we sticking around or bouncing? Not Galadriel needs us. Wait, how would she know that? Is she also sending letters through the apparently vast courier network in this land? And we cut to Mean Girl, who is trying to see Red because she was told to come by and see Red by Red. But the other trainee is like, oh, she just left, but if you hurry, you might catch her. So Mean Girl walks extremely slowly down the hall. Way to hustle. Oh wow, she just disappeared. But then Mean Girl easily discovers the secret door. And then we cut to Mean Girl at the market, still looking for Red, I guess? Cut to the questing troop questing. Yup, that fish stinks. Aw, that's so nice. First drink is on the house. <laughs> what? I actually really like stinky fish. Vamp is just like awkwardly lurking. You coming? I prefer to sleep under the stars. Okay, I'm pretty sure they're just headed in to have dinner. But uh, I, I guess it's it's nap time for, for you. Which makes sense. I mean, I suppose you'd want to sleep during the daytime. So I'm honestly impressed that you're up this late. Then we cut to Not Galadriel belatedly celebrating Tangled Day. Cougar's roommate decides to tell her that she knows things. Not Galadriel grabs a knife. What thing? Cougar's roommate notices the knife and is like, okay, good, yeah. I just wanted to scare you a bit, see if you'd immediately try to attack me for knowing things. Uh, good, glad, glad to see you're adequately paranoid to kill a friend, but not cautious enough to avoid riding out at night alone. I need you to swear loyalty to me. <laughs> Lol, no, that's not happening. But I will find you some books. Not Galadriel broods. Then we cut to a town somewhere having a good time. Oh, Hollister is here being a wallflower. An angry wallflower. So Bully is drunk and uh, Hollister has decided to make that his problem. So for being kind of a dick to the crazy guy, Hollister has decided to beat the bully to within an inch of his life. Overreaction much? Uh-oh, his mojo is activated by his anger. Quick, he returns home to his new girlfriend. Not tonight. Actually, yes tonight. No means no. Or not. Cut to Cliff giving a tour to Princess. Oh, you didn't really need a tour, did you? No, I basically grew up here. Wait, but then why were you confused and surprised by the size of your room when you arrived if you like know every inch of this place? Who let servants in here? Oh, um. Who? I'm not telling. If someone needs to be punished, punish me. Can do. Beatings every morning for the next three months. Before breakfast <laughs> or after. Oh my God, she's so brave. Where's Mean Girl? I don't know. Well, tell her to get her ass to my office. I'm so sorry you had to witness that horror. Please, I wish I'd get in trouble. They only care about Mean Girl. They get to the princess's bedroom and all of her stuff is gone. Well, you weren't complaining about the mess. <laughs> We cut to Red sneaking around at night. Mean Girl, 
follows her. She's got a real habit of stalking people through cities at night. Red is headed for the bedside of a sick old man. Mean Girl decides to allow herself to be seen and caught. Red is not happy. Sorry, um, I assumed you were trying to kill him. My bad. Get out. He's in pain. Uh, duh. So you're doing it wrong. Um, what he needs is get out. And then Red cries over the dying man being in pain because he's going to continue to be in pain because she just yelled at Mean Girl who was offering to help and, and now she won't be able to help because you kicked her out. So, so old man is going to keep being in pain and it's your fault and you're sad you can't help him and sad that you're preventing the person that might be able to help him from helping him and now he has to comfort you crying over the fact that you won't help him. Cut to Gambler working on that wall some more, but then he's he's broken through at last and uh, is surprised that it is in fact another cell on the other side. What did you expect? A barkeep from Marine is next door, and uh, they're gonna share his spoon. Cut to Not Galadriel and Co. reminiscing around a fire. Cougar wants to know about how they first met. Rawr. Not Galadriel says that uh, she was stalking him. Uh, he noticed and uh, he thought that she wanted to um, SA him. Cougar's into it. Simp was gonna try to kill her. Uh, so he threw her in a pond. And Simp throwing Not Galadriel in a pond is what convinced her that he's the, he's the simp for her. Anyone can protect you from a beastie but only the special ones can protect you from yourself. Please, no one help me in that way. Then we cut back to Gambler and Vibe Check Barkeep. Uh, they have broken through a substantial amount of that wall. Damn, who knew one spoon with two people could do all that in one night? Barkeep tells him about her Vibe Check thing, um, but he's not that impressed. No killing? <laughs> Lame. She sees a vision of future Gambler gutting Hollister. Too bad he's already dead as far as anyone knows, so that's impossible. Then we cut to Hollister and his new girlfriend, Pillow Talk. She likes being with Hollister because she can pretend he's someone else. Just what every guy wants to hear. But uh, he thinks of someone else too when he's with her. She wants to know who he thinks of and he's like, someone I wish I could forget. Aw, he's thinking of Cliff. Then we cut to a princess sharing her moonshine with Cliff. Princess knows all about me and girl. People say she's super powerful. Is this like worldwide gossip? Uh, Cliff's jelly that everyone only seems to care about Mean Girl. Cliff does all of her homework and no one cares. Mean Girl doesn't do anything and everyone loves her because she's brilliant. But uh-oh, Mean Girl's eavesdropping. Where's Mean Girl when I really need her? Off doing her own thing. What do you mean when you really need her? You're just doing chores. What, what do you need her for? Um, it sounds like you're Jelly. Uh, no. I'm a princess. Have I mentioned that? Um, I know Jelly when I see it. Cut to Red, coming to see Mean Girl. She is still miffed about her trying to help the old man, uh, but it's time for entrance exams. Then we cut to Simp snooping in Nocaladriel's purse, finds that poem and uh, keeps it. Uh oh, Nocaladriel's coming. Um, I I, me I messed up. Uh, the the Voldies, I I should have sensed them. Actually. I messed up. You see, last season, we didn't defeat Uber Baddie. We actually set free his henchmen. So let's deal with it together, like with everything. Actually, we don't deal with stuff together because um, cause I don't tell you things. You mean we've never been in this together? No. Also, when I went off alone without you, and then you came after me anyway and did end up saving my life, um, you also got injured, so you're a failure and I have no need for you, so goodbye forever. <laughs> Cut to wifeless in the village, getting attacked. Uh, good thing he gave up on pacifism, am I right? Hagrid is in trouble, oh no, wifeless to the rescue. Then the Armada ladies enter and boom, everyone goes flying, blown away by their wind powers, but somehow none of them are dead and everyone's actually fine. And then enters the mouth of Sauron, accompanied by insurance dude. Then cut to Hollister, snacking on his way to work again. Bully couldn't report for work. Cause someone beat him to a pulp the night before. Uh, that means that Hollister gets his job. Dang, didn't realize he was that cutthroat about getting a promotion. So anyway, he's been upgraded to taking care of <gasps> fake 2.0 from last season. Looks like Hollister wants to collab. Episode three, what might be? We open on Mean Girls exams. So the TLDR is that she has to face three Bogarts. Do this for you or not at all. You see, we here at Girl Boss Academy wanna make sure that you come out of here as selfish as possible. Now strip, but not completely. This is a family show. Can't have sleeves though when you when you go through the Bogart arch. 
bog arch, if you will. So here she's gonna face her greatest fears. Fear number one, a field of wheat with her dad in it. Terrifying. Some dudes start attacking, they're running away, mom saves them, back to the house. Oh, this is, this is her, her childhood. This is when she uh, had to hide under the floor when a whole ass army decided to slaughter her parents and not bother to look for her at all. So I guess she feels guilty about that. But yeah, another rule of the bog arch is that uh, you're gonna go into the bog arch, face your fear, and then there's gonna be one time and one time only that the bog arch reappears for you to come back again. Yeah, re remember that for later. Anyway, so yeah, she faces her childhood trauma of her parents dying in the room above her while she's hiding. Uh, and then her, her bog arch appears and she comes back out again and gets immediately doused in water. And the girl bosses are like, your trauma is over now, you're all better. Some people come out wounded, others don't. Cool. Next arch. Here we find a hospital back in the village and uh, Hollister's Pops has the pox. Uh, the replacement head mean girl is treating everyone with poison. Mean girl's like, um, girl bosses, who I formerly avoided and didn't trust at all, they can totes take care of this. No problem, they can heal everybody. Cool, then heal them. Oh, this is another rule of the bog arches. You can't have, your mojo like doesn't work in the bog arch visions. So remember that for later too. Mean girl, I guess forgets this rule and decides to try to start healing people with the mojo that she can't have access to in the arches. And Hollister's Pops is like, no worries. Good seeing you kid. How's my kid by the way? Um, will you stay with me until I die? Arch appears. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'll definitely stay, but first I have to leave. Bye. Guys, there's a plague in my hometown. La 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 la, keep that to yourself. We don't want to hear about your trauma. Next arch. Screaming. Red dress. Simp complimenting her. No. She's back, covered in blood. Bath time again. Don't worry, the blood isn't yours. Oh, great. No, I'm not worried at all. You did it. You're one of us now. Being one of you means being selfish. I'm suddenly not okay with that. Cut to Mean Girl packing. Cliff's like, you can't go, I need you. Nah, you'll actually be worthy of being a girl boss. Wait, so Mean Girl's leaving because she's too good for being a girl boss or because being a girl boss is too good for her? Anyway, she's riding away, riding away, and runs into Simp. Where are you headed? Home. I got ditched by the female that I was following around. Can I follow you around now instead? Arch appears. Uh-oh, this is still part of it. But she doesn't care. She's decided to stay. Cut back to the girl bosses waiting for her to come out. And uh, she's, she's not coming out. So dang, mean girl's a goner. And we blame Red. It is all her fault. Uh, never mind that the others co-signed this idea. It's Red's fault. Then we cut to the mouth of Sauron with a crazy ass manicure. Then a scary lady with a pacifier walks around ominously, selecting women. Then a lady with a basket on her head starts soapboxing about wanting their land back. Then pacifier chooses some more women. Basket case is like, join our cult and all is forgiven. Then they pick on Eyepatch to go first. Uh, he's unsurprisingly not into it. Those who won't swear the oaths will have the oaths sworn for them. I don't think that's how oaths work. Oh, you mean you're gonna kill him. How is that swearing an oath for him? Anyway, that convinced everyone else though, so everybody kneels. Cut back to Hollister in Bedlam with fake 2.0. I could see that your hair is red. Um, so can everyone? You keep it short to hide it, but, but I can see it. If he was trying to hide it, wouldn't he just like wear a hat? So, why'd you work so hard to come and see me? I remember you from my shame vest. Nah, that, that wasn't me. It was though. So what do you want? Well, I want to know how to control the mojo. You give me some wine, we can talk. Hollister immediately commences wine finding heist. Meanwhile, Town Crier is telling everyone about the quest for the horn thingy. I really am getting the sense that this is important. But uh, good news, Hollister's girlfriend is gonna find him with the wine heist. And we cut to Cliff and Princess and they find that Mean Girl's not in her room. But the principal is, so Mean Girl went through exams this morning and it didn't go great. We gotta get her back. Let me be really clear here. Mean girl is dead, but uh, your grief is your own. So don't go burdening other people with that shit. Stiff upper lip. Oh man, that really sucks. Leave me alone. No, I think I should keep bothering you. Get out. Cut to red with Gambler. We lost someone today that I actually really liked. You can leave now. Um, is this a trick? You said you'd never leave your friends and that it was not Galadriel's fault that you were separated. Well, go be with your friends then. You're just letting me go. Mean Girl died today because I didn't prep her and everyone's blaming me. 
So I'm gonna blame you. Cut to Red destroying Mean Girl's graduation ring. This is your fault. Can't talk to you, you're being hysterical. Fire. Your friend was the special one. You're supposed to be the smart one. If you were smart, you'd realize that I actually really liked your friend and I was totally 100% on her side. Um, it's not my fault that she let me down by not being ready for the exam that I thought she was ready for. So this is her fault. And also, uh, you're weak and suck. You have no idea what I'm capable of. Then we cut to Hollister and his girlfriend at some super high class party. Wine heist is a go. Some rich lady offers Hollister some horn hunt exposition. Well, while Hollister was learning about how the horn hunt is all fake, girlfriend got the wine. Cool, I'm gonna go now. Wait. But like the party, I got what I needed. Bye. Hollister runs to take the wine immediately to 2.0. And uh, 2.0's answer to how you control it is, lol, you can't. You're, you're crazy. How dare you? And then act crazy. You know, you're not the real 2.0. No? You know what, I've, I've decided this was a bad idea. You gotta get me out of here. Nope. Bye. Cut to Gambler wandering around. Security headquarters is very tight. Finds Cliff crying at a picturesque bench. Doesn't speak to her and goes back to his cell. Does this qualify as Stockholm Syndrome? Uh, he moves his wardrobe over so that Barkeep can utilize his open door. Uh, why are you not leaving? I, I don't know where to go. You for real right now? Okay, well you can stay, but I'm going. And uh, then he, he follows her. Then we cut to Wifeless in a carriage with insurance man. Insurance guy says that uh, Wifeless is gonna be an honored guest, but like not get his hopes up because he's actually gonna be treated quite badly. There's something special about you. Huh? I want to meet the monster. Who are are you? You know. Reveals he's the uber baddie. But Hollister killed you. Obviously not. Then the wolves attack the caravan. What do you want? I'll be watching you. Vampire breaks in, helps Wifeless break out. Follow that dog! Cut to Barkeep casually saddling a horse with Gambler. No rush. It's not like this is a prison break or anything. BRB. And she goes to see Red. <gasps> this was all part of a plan? A plot? A trick? A trap? A conspiracy? Okay, but how did they know that Gambler would be stupid enough to try to break through an interior wall instead of an exterior wall? And then how did they know that once they let him out of his cell, he'd be so aimless as to be like, I will literally stay in my cell until Barkeep goes somewhere and I will follow her wherever she goes. Like, I, I feel like this plan has some flaws. But anyway, yeah, the plan is to have Barkeep take Gambler somewhere. And this will somehow mean that neither Barkeep nor Red are ever under not Galadriel's power again. Cut to Hollister's girlfriend being kind of pissed at him for leaving her at the party alone. Cue makeup banging. His mojo's going crazy though, but she's like into it. Uh, oh, just kidding, that was a dream. And then Hollister wakes up and awake, uses his mojo to set his own room on fire. Cut to Cliff in the exam room, trying to mojo her way through the arch to save a mean girl. Um, that's not gonna work. It also takes more than one to do it. So help me? No. Mean girl died for you, so don't kill yourself trying to save her because that would mean it was a waste. I can't leave her. Best I can do is a sleepover in the exam room. Then we cut to mean girl still in dreamland, wifeless playing with her daughter, gambler's looking fancy, brings her a letter, she ignores it. Simp has let his hair down, literally. Mean girl tells him that it was a letter from Cliff. She and the other girl bosses are heading somewhere to fight something. Simp asks her if she has any regrets about choosing this life. My only regret is you letting your hair down. History repeats, house gets attacked, but Mean Girl kills the beasties, but, but not before all of her friends die. And then Mean Girl uses her mojo in dreamland, even though that's not supposed to be possible, cause she is special. And then the arch appears for a second time, which is not supposed to happen because she is special. Mean Girl grabs her fake kid and is like, you're coming with me through this arch. And then surprise, surprise, the kid doesn't come through because she's not real. And the uh, Cliff and Princess are there to comfort her. And and that's that's where we end the episode. So, yeah. Off to a smashing start. What, what did we learn? We've learned Hollister is somewhere with someone and his big plan was to break into Bedlam, but that kind of didn't go so good. So now we're back to square one and Wifeless is, is trekking. Um, there's some bad people whose motivations remain unclear and Mean Girl is super, super, super special. And Cliff has a new bestie. All right, I think we're all caught up and ready for episode four.